Hi everybody, Jacob Reed here from ReviewEcon.com. Today we're going to be looking at the Microeconomics FRQ from 2022. This is set two, question number three. In order to do well on this question, you should already be through unit six. If after watching this video, you still need a little more help, head over to ReviewEcon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. Let's get into it. All right, for this question, we have a natural monopoly graph that's already been provided for us. We have our demand, our long run average total cost curve or average total cost curve, they're always in the long run, and marginal cost as well as marginal revenue. The first question we have to answer here is about the first 60 units produced for this firm. The question is, is this firm experiencing economies of scale, diseconomies of scale, or constant returns to scale? And we have to explain our answer. So we're looking at all of the units up to 60. And questions about economies of scale always focus on the long run average total cost curve. As you can see, the long run average total cost curve is constantly downward sloping through 60 units. And since it's constantly downward sloping through those units, they are experiencing economies of scale because the long run average total cost curve is decreasing as output increases. For part B, we're going to use the numbers on the graph to identify the price and the quantity that will be produced if the monopolist is earning zero economic profit. The break-even price and quantity is found where demand equals average total cost. And that's because demand is also the average revenue or price. So there's that point right there. And that gives us a price of $15 and a quantity produced of 50. Just identify it, $15 and 50 to get your point. For part C, we're going to assume that regulators impose a price ceiling that results in the firm producing the socially optimal quantity in the short run. We're going to calculate the total revenue at the price ceiling, and we're going to show our work. Now we have to remember that the socially optimal quantity is found where demand equals marginal cost. And that's because it's really where marginal benefit equals marginal cost, and demand is the marginal benefit curve. So there is our allocatively efficient or socially optimal point right there. Move on over to that Y axis, and we see the price of $10. And that's the price ceiling we're going to want. Drop down, we have a quantity produced of 60. And remember, total revenue is price times quantity. You're essentially calculating the area of that rectangle right there. Plug in the numbers and do the math. 60 units times $10 equals $600. And if you calculated it correct, you got your point. For part C double I, we're going to explain why the firm requires a subsidy to produce this quantity in the long run. You'll notice that at 60 units, the price is $10, but the average total cost curve is higher, and that average total cost is $13. That means the firm is suffering economic losses. So the answer here is because the firm is earning economic losses since price is greater than average total cost. For part C III, we're going to calculate the amount of the lump sub subsidy that would be required to keep this monopolist producing the socially optimal quantity in the long run, and we have to show our work. Remember that if they don't have this lump sum, this firm will eventually shut down permanently and exit the market. But if they get a lump sum subsidy that's equal to their economic losses, that rectangle right there, then they will stay in business for the foreseeable future. So calculate the area of that rectangle. It has a height of three, that's $13 minus $10. Multiply it by the 60 units, and that is $180 for that lump sum subsidy. And there you have it. That's how you're going to answer question number three from 2022's microeconomics exam, set two. If you still need more help, head over to reviewecon.com and pick up the total review booklet. It has everything you need to know to ace your microeconomics and macroeconomics exam. That's it for now. I'll see you all next time.